Hey guys, today uh, we're going to be checking out Starlink. We're going to do a little bit of a deep dive into, I guess, kind of how much the power usage is, how much, like where I put it on my van, what I think of it. Let's check out the performance dish, the one with the kickstand, not the one with the articulating arm. First of all, I have been using it. The modem is just behind this. It's just here. And I have to be really honest, it actually works pretty well hidden behind that little wicker basket and kind of everything else that is in there. We have it kind of like hockey strapped. I'll show you. Oh, there's a massive truck coming. Hold on. That was a big one. All right, so we've got it hockey strapped on here so it doesn't like move uh, when we drive. Uh, and it's been going really well, but I kind of want to put it somewhere a little bit more central in the van. And the power cable and the, there's another gray cable. Um, the cable that goes from the dish itself which is in the front seat there to this is like absurdly long so we're going to try to put this in a different spot where it doesn't cause this mess this gray cable all of this gray cable <laughs> is all part of the dishy setup and it's kind of just been shoved in there as you can see look at that um and to be honest, it's time to, f to clean that up. So we're going to be cleaning that up um, and checking out some of the stats uh, for power usage. So come along, enjoy the ride. So that's the back. And as I said, that rubber grommet here, like that. It's pretty thick. It's got like the little things on it to stop moisture getting in. And so far, I can't fault it really. So the cable, this is the cable to the dish. And as you can see here, it's got those rubber grommets on it. All right, and then, so that's the power supply here for the router unit rather, sorry. That's the power supply for the router. Okay, so what I've got is these things, these metal plates. Now, originally I was gonna use these to kind of like attach a few things together, but, if we kind of bend this into a bit of an L, uh, into a bit of an L shape, I'm thinking that potentially we could like have like a lip at the top here and then bend it down. So let's, I mean, let's give it a little go. Let's see if I can do this with my hands first. <laughs> okay, that worked pretty well. And then how big is the thing? So if we do it on that one, and then this one we bent here. Oh, I might give myself a little bit of room for the, <coughs> for the cables. There, so basically something like this is what I'm thinking. And then we can kind of sit it there like that. And then I'll just put like a screw on the side to stop it going side to side, like that. Dunk, 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 dunk. Yeah, we do want it there. That's pretty good. What a good time. Okay, let's drill him in. Testing. That's pretty heckin' good. That's holding that pretty nice. Okay, so I've plugged in the ends of the router I think we're gonna want them to kind of the cables to come down this way down the monitor bit and I've obviously put the thing back for the uh for my drone now where did I put the oh, yeah, here it is so if we put this in there like that and then oh, We chuck this one around the other side. 
That should hold it pretty well, I think. Okay, so we've got the fire extinguisher here, which we're going to take off. We're going to take this off as well. But I'm going to take this off with the screwdriver first, and then we're going to put up the new ones we got. So what I've got is like these little things, and they've got a little screw hole there, and the cable's going to sit in here. So... Okay, so now that we've got the cable kind of like twirl, I'm in a different shirt, it's a different day, you know, work less, ha. Okay, so I usually put Dishy kind of up on the front solar panel, because as you can see, let me see if I can show you, I'm sure you've seen it before, I've got solar panels kind of like the whole way along the van there, as you can probably see. So what we're going to do is we're going to put them up on the roof. Well, we're going to put Dishy up on the roof, but I put the cable through a little hole in the window. Um, just until I get something a bit more permanent. I'd like to get like an articulating arm that sits kind of like on the back door. Because a highest doesn't have barn doors that open like this. It has a, a back hatch almost that opens like that. Um, so I want to get an articulating arm that goes from like... 90 degrees up to zero or rather 180 sorry 180 degrees down up to 90 degrees up so then if the boot is shut i can have it pointing upwards and if the boot is like you know um open i can still have it pointing at that zero degrees and then when i'm driving i can have it tilted down so the wind goes around the back and i don't run into that hun like 100 kilometers an hour wind thing that the website states that it can't handle it was a little bit bigger than i thought it was going to be to be honest this is it it's pretty big i don't know if you guys think that this is big but this is a bit big for me um it's not that it's hard to find a spot for it to like live in in the van it's not like it's pretty thin but it is like obnoxiously long and I think that the Mini that's out now in the US is probably going to fix a lot of that issue. Um, I don't know how I feel about the modem being built in, but I understand it being built in. Anyway, so this is the new performance one. It's got an articulating arm and that's kind of what it stands on. The cable goes up into this little hole here. Same cable, cable as the others that I showed you. And then you can take off the arm by lifting this on. I've never done that before. Honestly, I don't see a need to start now. I don't think most people are going to use it. But if you do, you just flick that up. Easy. So, what I do first is I'll take my cable and then I just shove that through my window. Shut the window, the door rather. And then we got this extra cable coming out. This is like three feet. And then I plug it in, just like that. I'm just going to make sure she's in all the way. And then look how strong that, that arm is. It's pretty strong. So then I just like yeet it onto the top of the van. Ta-da! Finished. And that's how I set up my Starlink. Um, I'm in Australia, so I'm in the Southern Hemisphere. So my dish has to point south in the northern hemisphere your dish has to point north because there's something to do with the equator i think that's where all the tv satellites are i think there's something to do about the equator so i might point mine south which is this way um i'll turn it on inside and i'll show you what the wattages look like okay so what i've got here this is basically what do they call it i guess like a power meter this is its little specs and basically this is going to tell us how much electricity in watts or amps 
uh, Starlink takes from on to off. I'll have to flip this, but as you can see, Australia runs on this type of plug with 240 um, volts coming in. I'm gonna plug in, I'm gonna set it to amps, which is what we've got here. I'm gonna plug in our dish and then we will measure how many amp draws we get. Okay, so as we do this, the Starlink app is going to be loading here on my phone. Connected without internet, that's to be expected at this stage. And then we are entering the Starlink network. Optimizing connection. And this is the bit where it kind of like goes through your alignment if you need to make slight adjustments. There's a setting called alignment just here, which you can tap into. And after a few minutes, seconds, um, a little picture of your dish will show up in this gray box, in this gray box. Um, and it will tell you if you need to make some adjustments. It usually takes about a minute or two um, just to kind of boot up correctly. All right, so it looks like we're pretty aligned. I could be a bit more perfect. Um, it's asking me to move it. Now this speed test is just running off my phone and it looks pretty good. Not too bad. And we're looking at about half an amp at the moment, about half an amp. pretty good upload here where we are now there is a big tree that kind of obstructs this a little bit and if we have a look at our, at our obstructions not that one what am I after statistics so you can see here so this is the major outage so this was when we first turned it on and it was powering up initializing same with the latency it does spike like that you will notice and then this is how much I'm, I'm kind of using. If we go to outages, what I tend to find is, despite tree coverage, um, I'd, I'll show you kind of the coverage that I'm looking at here. But my two second and five second outages are actually non-existent. But my point second outages actually can be a lot. Um, so I tend to find that there are quite a bit of minor droppages. Now for games like Warcraft, functions like Zoom meeting and most things you're going to do, streaming, news, sending messages, all of that, like a 1.1 second of an outage is not going to affect it. But if you're playing a competitive shooter, say like Counter-Strike, basically anything, any kind of game that's going to give you very small tolerances for for droppages um, this is going to cause a problem now a game an oddly oddly a game that this happens with is actually overwatch and that's pretty much because of these 1.01 second outages that tends to happen and these outages are only happening because it's swapping satellites nine times out of ten um, but they happen fairly often because I think it's like because I'm pretty sure it's about two to three minutes for it to go from one horizon to the next um, so you're potentially looking at a lot of these 0.1 second outages but almost none of the two second outages which is going to be fine for 99% of the games as you can see here there's those small little outages just there but our power has stabilized a little bit. We're looking at 0.27 amps. Looking at 50 watts on average now that we're up and running. 64, 65. If I do a speed test, the more you push it, the more it's going to pull. So running the speed test, we're looking at 100 watts. 
101, 96. And this would be the same for like streaming video. So generally on idle, you're looking at about 50 watts. Using the dish, you're looking at about 100 watts. Um, powering up, you'd be looking at about the same kind of wattages as well. It just depends on how hard the dish pushes, which is relative to the speed that you get, um, which is another thing that I've noticed. The speed thoroughfrough seems to fluctuate quite a bit. On most kind of cabled in fiber um, internet, you'll find that if, you've, if you're on a 100 megabyte plan, you'll get 100 megabytes 99% of the time. However, on Starlink, I can range from 500 megabytes a second to 300 to 90 to 80 to 120. Um, it's really inconsistent. Great speeds, don't get me wrong, great speeds, but wildly inconsistent speeds. So you can't rely on getting like 300 megabytes per second at all times. And I hope you're kind of seeing that as I'm running these tests um i'm ranging from 200 to like 120 <laughs> um in back-to-back -back tests which is really kind of that surprised me honestly um and that seems to happen pretty commonly when i'm downloading games as well look at this 50 i just had a test that was 200 and now i'm like 70 so it's quite inconsistent speeds. Again, much, much better coverage than any kind of phone signal is going to get you. Um, and these kinds of speeds are not going to affect anything from Zooms to games to streaming, news, sending messages, so on and so forth. But if you're looking at really high consistency, Starlink is just not it um and then we had one that was back up to 200 it's really strange the consistency of it um i do tend to find that this evens out a little bit the longer you have it set up but for my use case i would maybe moving every day or two um which is a problem 300 yeah Very strange. Very, very strange. And then look, the, the upload is about the same, I guess. It's slower, so I get, yeah, it's, it's just wildly inconsistent. Really inconsistent. <laughs> so as I said to you, I've got my dish here. I've got this tree pretty much right in front of it. Um, which you'd think would block it fairly decently. But as you saw with my speed tests, it's actually pretty good. I've got a few more trees over here. That, and then I've got some telegraph poles and stuff. Although I wouldn't imagine this would affect it too much. Um, and I'll show you, I'll do some updates in some other places where I go with tree coverage and things like that. But that kind of tree coverage, I don't notice a difference with. So that kind of goes through my Starlink experience. I absolutely love it. In Australia, the cost of the roaming service is about 174 Australian dollars a month. Blah, 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 conversion here. Da -ding. Um, but I, I love it. I'm definitely gonna be having it, keeping it and paying for it. Cause I just think it's only going to get better. It's only going to be more valuable to me in the future. And, <sighs> The speeds, my mobile data plane just doesn't hit that and it's unlimited. It's fantastic. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you. Bye.